Yo. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? Today we're getting into cyber threat intelligence, and I think we're starting on. Let me see what it was. For day. I'll, I'll tell you the next, what's, what day is it? 11, 16. The next two weeks are going to be a little bit hectic for me because cyber threat intel and network security and traffic analysis. So should be a lot more technical once we get done with the cyber threat intel stuff. The next two weeks should be a little bit hectic for me because I'm actually requalifying for my work role at work which is ridiculous because it's damn near built like not even to brag or hate to even sound like I'm bragging, but like I was like 33% of the effort to build the work role, at least 33%. <sighs> and now I'm requalifying on the stuff that I wrote. So what I have to pay attention because it's a lot of stump the chunk questions, like those questions that is like, they try to, Purposely go out of their way to fool you so you can get it wrong. This is just being a hundred percent technical, so I'm dealing with that. Um, so my focus, I won't be able to one hundred percent focus on my definite purpose for the next two weeks, which sucks because I'm only happy when I focus on my definite purpose. It's it's just it is what it is. When I have to derail my time right now that I have like section off of myself for something else that makes me an angry man. But I got to feed my family. So threat intelligence tools, we'll get started. Then I'm going to pull up my live stream. It makes me really angry. Don't have time to do it at work. Um, too much stuff going on. So like right after this, I have to jump into that. And it's, it's stuff like, man, I'm telling you, bro, the first module is like how to use MBAP, how to, my bad. I ain't going to complain about work. Y'all, y'all know how work is sometimes. I'm just, it is what it is with me. What's good. son? So my son is on live stream watching. What's up, man? And my salary, yeah, yep, I would say, yeah, I am. So that's a good day. What's up, Angelo? What's good, man? Or I don't like to say man because, like, nobody has genders in here. So, but you know how it is. So th cyber threat intelligence tools, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you what that is. It's inherent in the name. What um, threat intelligence is. Um, I did like, I did have a, uh, I did have a lady reach out to me and I was like, wow, that's like the first time ever in life. Cause when I talk to the channel, I'm talking to men and young men and I try to use that terminology often. So, um, then she reached out and she was like, she wanted my notes and I'm like, wow. So this channel is really reaching out to a lot of people, which I appreciate. But let's do this thing. Be one of those companies, Cisco assembled along blah, 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 blah. Talos dashboard, several labs, vulnerability information. Yeah, we know about that. Reputation center. If you if you're new to kind of like the field and you don't understand the role that cyber threat intelligence plays, let me tell you that you're not going to be able to find things effectively. You're not going to be able to be an effective threat hunter without cyber threat intelligence. Um, so I'll tell you right now, like the whole intelligence, the whole intelligence vibe came from the military and how, uh, before the military goes on missions, they need, um, intelligence, um, Intel for short to, uh, make sure to see what the enemy's doing in the area, et cetera. Right. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen a lot of like army movies and stuff like that. Um, Cyber defense took a lot of stuff from the military. So if you are in the military or DOD, or if you are a military affiliated in your country, you are, you have a leg up when it comes to some of this stuff in terminology. 
What is the customer name of the IP address? Who is info? What? Oh, I have to open up the uh, lab. But with that said, um, you have to, especially if you're working. Um, I last uh, the last live stream we talked a lot about the the uh, how some sites use the word. What was the word? Um, they use the word engagement a lot or engage the adversary, which is pretty is pretty wild. That I can get away with that. So I'm going to cheat because I don't want to wait. I'm going to cheat here. So I don't want to, I don't want to keep anybody. I'll try hacking. So obviously the answers are on the internet. You just have to Google them, but, um, I don't want to slow the live stream down waiting on Cyber threat intelligence, but cyber threat intelligence isn't, uh, yep. I'll see you later, son. <laughs> My son is, uh, he's, he's got a, a YouTube channel he's working on. So we're up together trying to get it, man. Rubbing off on people. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cheat here because again, this is a live stream and I want it to be more about learning and less about Toronto. Customer IP. Okay, it's not in here. So I guess we will wait. Oh. It's not that. Of the IP. Okay, I don't see it. So we're gonna have to wait. Why do I have this hot ass jacket on, bro? <clears throat> What's up, room? How's everybody doing this morning? For me, speaking of being salaried without saying too much, because again, I, I haven't talked to my employer as far as like what I can and can't share. Um, once I do talk, have that talk, then I definitely um, know what and what not to say. But as far as being salaried, I'm salaried. And then depending on my se seniority in my work role, um, gives me a, a bit of a pay boost. And <laughs> right now, what is the customer name of IP address? What is this? Oh, it's that... Uh, Right now, I'm. Um, there's two. There's two official levels, and uh, I'm at the the top, the higher level, and I'm trying to keep my money. So, the recertify sucks. Customer name of the IP address. Where was I at? I forgot. There's an email following somewhere. You know what? I elect that we skip this and I come back to this because I don't even remember this VM. I remember another one. I really do. SC C net. Okay. It wasn't threat intelligence. It was cyber threat intelligence. Yeah, we're skipping it. Oh, I'll come back to it. I'm here to see something new. From <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate you showing up. I just don't understand, though. Okay, so this is legit, I guess. But yeah, so we I had to I had to talk this, um, as a matter of fact about uh, cyber threat intelligence at work. It's crazy how like my live streams always sit to um, fit into what we're doing at work. So basically with cyber threat Intel, a lot of threat hunters like to um, try to try to go at this thing alone because, you know, I mean, who wouldn't. Right. So they use their skills and say, OK, well, based off of what I've learned from this thing or that thing, 
I'm going to hunt and I'm going to come up with different analytics and different data sets and different strategies to try to find a hacker, which is fine. You have to do that. But then when they, but before you do that, you have to make sure you're keeping up with the latest reports first, because those are your, uh, if you're punching, you have the opportunity to throw a hook or your, your best punch. You throw your best punch, bro. You don't pull that punch or you don't, you don't hold that punch back. And this is the same thing goes with threat hunting. If you have the, if you have the opportunity to knock the enemy out, you knock his ass out. And that's what cyber threat intelligence is. You knock his ass out. If you are doing analytics and stuff like that, or trying to um, come up with your own ways of hunting or new experimental ways, what else do they have? They have a uh, machine learning. Those are jabs. I'm a boxing fan, obviously, right? <laughs> But those are jabs. Like you, you sitting like this, right? You jab, jab, jab with those analytics and those tools and everything. But as soon as you get an intelligence report, that's your haymaker. That's your that's your hook. So I understand that it all fits in. It's just that whenever you get an opportunity to knock the enemy out, you knock them out. And uh, that's the exciting part. I know it's not really exciting here because they're asking me to go through email, which I think I'm gonna skip all of this. I don't know. Because the email doesn't even look attractive or is this how you expect it to look? Let's go back up. All right. Oh, uh, skip that one. So I didn't get the file. Scenario one. Uh, you are a SOC analyst service. Suspicious emails have been forwarded to you from other coworkers. You must obtain, obtain details from each email to tri triage the incidents reported. Use the tools discussed throughout the room to help you analyze the recipient's email. That should be easy. Receive from receive. This is the guy. And it better be right. Boom. Right. From Talos Intelligence, that tax file can also be identified by the detection alias that starts with an H. What? Detection alias. I've never heard of that. Okay, let me go back. Detection alias. Why are they being like super cryptic with their words? No one, no one talks like that, bro. Detection alias that starts with an H. Hmm. I don't know. Let's keep going. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta keep going. Uh, download test files. This is email three. One time for your mind, one time. Name of the attachment is. We're going to get it in a minute. Complete version. What's the name of the attachment? Does anyone see it? Is this big enough for everyone? I don't know. Name of the attachment. See, I hate this, man. I should be using Thundermail, actually. Do I have that? No, I don't. Let's see, email, mail reader, I guess. Oh man, they don't have anything. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to thug it out, bro. <laughs> For real. Damn, I don't know. Give me a hint. Uh, let's try some stuff. Doc. PDF. Text. 
don't know, man. I, I don't I don't see that. Mm. Oh, sales receipt. Here we go. Which this is crazy because next Wednesday we're doing a fish to fishing module. What malware families associated with the attachment? Oh, well, let's see. Um, yo, what the hell? Okay, we're gonna, um, we're gonna skip ahead on some of these. Oh, it's a customer name. Okay, complete web reviews was the one previously. I was looking for a damn IP. Sometimes you just need help. Speaking of help, how many people are on like, I know a few people, I, I recognize a few people in the room. How many people that I don't know that's watching me are on Hack the Box? By like either like putting something in the chat or something like that. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you, sometimes people will have like, uh, they'll have hack the box accounts, but they never log in. That's probably 75 to 85% of the people that work, uh, never log in. They have try hack me accounts too. Never log in. Um, it's not, I don't know. I don't want to say it's not their fault, but it kind of is. Anyway, this is the advice that I would give someone while I'm trying to um, catch up here. Make sure my live stream doesn't like. Oh. Oh, okay. That's what we're supposed to do. This is a good actual follow through thing here. We'll just make sure we do the right thing here. I just don't want to mess with emails right now. Detection alias that starts with an H. Oh, that's a de detection alias. I've never done this. So I already told you guys about like um, putting things into a search engine though. That is not a skill. Um, I don't want to say it's not a skill. Let me back up a little bit. You have to really be careful depending on what you want to do there. So what do they do? They got the SHA 256, put it in the file reputation search and then they got let me, um, let me just repeat it just so that for the people that didn't see the first, uh, stock analyst or stock level one joint, you don't, if you're a thread hunter, <clears throat> if you're a thread hunter, you don't want to, um, put hashes and stuff into search engines. You don't want to put hashes and IPs and anything like that into uh virus totals and things like that unless your organization has their own or you download the actual database from the um from the internet which people do that too um malware family again i'm cheating here uh, okay they use the same thing so i'll tell you right now that I, i'm not <clears throat> I'm not going to condone any of this because this is not the way that I thread hunt. <laughs> Complete it. Completed the room. Yay. So <clears throat> one thing that I'm proud of too is like, I'm all about streaks, bro. Oh, I don't know if you can see that because my head is in the way. Let me get my head out of the way so I can show you. I'm all about, oh, no, it wasn't in the way. Let's put that right there. I'm all about streaks. This is like my eighth. I feel like it's more than eight days straight, but try hack me has been eight days. You, you guys know that I'm going for 365 days of streaming. Or if you don't know, now you know. I'm just really, really into streaks and making sure that you're keeping up with your stuff. That's pretty much it for that one. We'll go into Yara now. So Yara, Yara rules. 
Let's see. We'll just complete that. So they're going to tell you a lot about Yara and how you um, basically detect things. I will tell you that Yara is in high demand at work. The uh, how to understand um, how to use this. Um, I have covered strings in much more detail. Uh, what is the name of the base? 16 number system that Yara can detect. Base 16 is a uh, hex, right? It's gotta be. Yeah. Would you text? <laughs> Would the text enter your name be a string in an application? Yes. What? Then it's just no. Oh, yay. They want yay. Yeah, whatever. Those are easy. We need something a little bit more challenging there, but not like, um, what does it say? This room, blah, blah, blah. Deploy your own instance, scroll up with the timers, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to wait anything. You must be connected if you wish, if you're unfamiliar with this process. Okay, so we will connect to the instance. But um, if you don't know about Yara rules, and you want to be a threat hunter. Uh, that ain't really. I barely know anything about. So I I know the the impact that they've had on what we do. Um. So yeah, these are the two big ones. The two big ones are Yara rules and Sigma rules. Yara rules are gonna allow you to, well, both do the same thing. Um, and as you see on the screen, you identify and classify malware samples. That doesn't really do it justice as far as what they are, but that's what they say they are, right? But you, you basically, let's go to an example so I can show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is a good one. So it, it comes like that, and basically you're just classifying the malware, or classifying whatever. But um, in certain programs, you can run these as well. So that's what makes this the classification of things good. So you're probably saying like, well, why is that important? You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, well, I got antivirus and stuff like that, or I have this endpoint detection uh, and response program, which we're going to get into. We're going to get into those things um, later in the upcoming weeks. But I have all of these things, right? Why do I need Yara rules as well? Well, just like I was saying in the last uh, stock level one um, video, if you are a, uh, if you work in a certain sector, like hospitals, banking, etc., sometimes you'll have specific malware crafted for your organization. Like it's real. And you need to lean on those on that threat intelligence to say, okay, we're going to build, damn, this is taking so long. We need to build a Yara rule for this one thing until uh, Windows Defender catches up or until uh, whatever uh, endpoint detection and response tool catches up. Because sometimes they're just not caught up on the latest stuff. Um, Yara rules also kind of works for unwanted things as well. So maybe your antivirus isn't catching it, but, uh, you just don't, it's not necessarily malicious, it's just unwanted. Um, I remember um, Clippy. <laughs> Where is it? <sighs> okay, so I remember Clippy back in the day, man. I don't know. So you had Clippy, then I think it was Bonsai Buddy. Bonsai Buddy. So, I mean, if, you, if you're if you not like super old school, <laughs> if you don't like know nothing about like these things, um, when you download a certain stuff on your, on your computer, like certain little characters will pop up like, um, I don't understand like this, this, um, purple monkey and this, um, per, uh, this clip, this clip thing. And they're supposed to be useful, but they ended up being like spyware and malware. I hope I'm not misquoting that, but they started to be unwanted, but then people would download them 
So it's like, how do you get rid of stuff like that? Now, obviously, those are two very old school examples, but we used to have a problem, a huge problem with spyware. And spyware was like all like spyware and adware were the two main things. And so these don't classify as viruses or malicious, but they're still on one. You don't want them on your computer because they just make your experience suck. We don't have to deal with that as much, but that's just a, a crude example of, okay, it's not a virus, but I still don't want it on my computer. <laughs> so, oh, uh, let me see what this says. Um, it's teaching me how to make yard rules, which I've never actually made, legitimately made a yard rule. I normally like copy it and paste it and then just uh, put the things that I want in there. All right, so first thing we can do is touch some file. Um, touch my first rule. By the way, I want to say something to the to people that are watching me and the subscribers and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I'm just like every other YouTuber, and then I appreciate I appreciate subscribers. I appreciate people liking my videos, and I appreciate people commenting. But ain't nothing like people that attend the live stream. Like I'm partial to those people that like, that might not be fair, but it is what it is, bro. Like it's if like we can back and forth and we can talk, that is like, I really appreciate that above everything else. And I just gotta be real. Like, yeah, like again, like I got a relationship with all my subscribers, but the people that attend the live streams, man, especially when I'm being like mad boring, like that is a solid, 100% solid. Uh, open the first, uh, uh, we don't use we don't use nano here. Open the my first rule that y'all are. Mm. Hmm. But yeah. So when like when people when people try to like like come to my channel and try to mean like I'm only taking I'm only taking like jokes and stuff like that from people that I actually know. You feel me? So like if you show up out of nowhere, nobody knows your name and you try to be like slick with your jokes and stuff like that. And you don't have no respect with the channel. It's like, you don't look crazy doing that. Like Rodnet, for example, like Rodnet could joke with me and I could joke with him back at school. But like, don't nobody know you from like the live streams or like actually being badass at um King of the Hill and stuff like that. You come in and you try to like, <laughs> you try to flex like I'll I'll still be kind of like cordial, but it's like, bro, you gotta understand like this isn't a YouTube channel per se. This is more of a community. You feel me? And with within the community, it's like people have earned their stripes, like earned their clout. So just understand that and understand that um, the more you participate and the more you contribute, like that's gonna be like beneficial to you throughout the uh channel i don't know if i talk too much there but it is what it is <sighs> all right to name blah 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 this is boring complete or correct whatever let's get let's keep going i actually don't want to set up and do yard rules actually so i'm going to keep i'm going to skip past this because this is something that i should do on my own and this is not exciting so i'm going to back out of this but yeah, Yara rules, ladies and gentlemen. If you learn them, you're gonna be uh, very popular at work. If you learn what they do and everything like that, you're gonna be very popular. But I have no patience for anything boring like that. So we're gonna keep going. Uh, what is OpenCTI? I've never heard of this either. Open Source Threat Intelligence Platform. Again, like this is, these are things that, um, that companies have modeled after like uh, like um, military stuff, like Department of Defense stuff, in that like you need a source for intelligence. You need a source that you can come and say, hey, I don't know. I don't know if someone's targeting me, please help. Let me start researching and Googling the stuff. Um, so whatever. So let's go to this, because this looks like a dope site actually. Uh. Wow. This is crazy. Like, it's crazy how it's like I like like I did like I'm doing a live stream or whatever the case and I'm learning stuff. 
as we go. Like I'm learning about new tools here. Oh, uh, let me see how they say to use it. Is it, it says open source, so I'm gonna assume that it's free. They're talking about demonstration. Normally when you hear, when you see demos, that means it's not free. Oh man. Let's try this one. They want you to log in, bro. What the hell? Okay. This ain't gonna work. Maybe I can like just do that. That's OAuth if you didn't know. Oh, I'm not even like doing all that, man. Heck. All right, I'm trying to log into this. All right, so I've done that. I'm about to hang this, hang this up. Click here to proceed. Been verified. Okay, this is a thing. Um. As you see, it's just another dashboard. We see we see a lot of these dashboards, right? Um, I don't know how to use this, but this is pretty cool. So, <laughs> uh, that's all I can say for now. These are three, whatever. What does it say it does? I'm just gonna complete, keep going. So, generally speaking, do you want a platform where if you have a large organization or if you're worldwide or if you're like nationwide, you want, uh, you want a certain place where it's like, as you thread hunt and you find things, you can put reports into a, uh, certain place. And if those reports are properly parsed and properly tagged, et cetera, people could search through that database to, uh, have the latest on, um, and like internally, what is it? What's the word I want to say here? It's internal, um, intelligence, like internal to your organization, which is, uh, more valuable than anything else. So there's that, uh, don't really care. Oh, I actually do external services. I guess it's the API graph. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a stack guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think like this, but um, this is a very um, valuable skill to have to be able to think and, and draw like draw stuff out like this. Whatever reason, we have people that work through this. I know if I'm an attacker and I scan this, there are things that I'm going to uh, be able to see and not see. Also, I know that when people put this out, people kind of put this out kind of haphazardly and we need to stop that. Um, because now I know like your stack and what you're using. It's open source, so it's fine to them. But like, if you, if it's not open source, you don't want to be doing that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Ah, uh, all right. Damn. We gotta start another machine, bro. Hey, at least won't murder me. All right, we're waiting, man. We are waiting. They changed my, no, is that my IP? Yeah, they changed my IP, bro. That's not cool. What time is it? 5.44. We got a little bit of time. I don't know. I don't know why Try Hacking makes me wait like this. Let's go check out some other stuff, guys. So we are on the open CTE thing. I'm open CTI, I mean, 
Damn, open CTE. Miss. Oh, so, so all of these are kind of like, I guess they are. It is a uh, threat hunting stuff. Malware sharing platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of already know that. But these three things, even though cyber threat intelligence can be quite, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's not as technical and not as fun to kind of like learn these things. Again, this is your biggest punch. This is your hardest punch against your adversary, against the hackers that might be in your network. So understand that without intelligence, like good luck, bro. <clears throat> uh, okay. So we have an IP address. It's not a walk in the park over here. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> the Marcus Cousins, bro. He's a wild boy. What is the name of the group that uses the 4H malware? I don't know. That's a good question. Can I just read and find that out? Or do I have to Google? 4H rat malware. Oh, they want me to use the uh, this thing here. So Brittany, so Brittany Griner back in the day challenged the challenged the Marcus Cousins to a basketball game, and uh, it was super hilarious. <laughs> one of the guys, like the uh, one of the coaches, was like, I don't know if anybody watches basketball, but one of the coaches was like. If that um that ever happens, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna mortgage my house. I'm gonna sell all my cars and I'm gonna go to the bank and cash it all out. And I'm gonna go to Vegas and I'm gonna put all my money under Marcus Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> like some stuff just be unnecessary, yo. <laughs> oh, it was funny though, man. You know, I'm I'm sympathetic. I'm sympathetic to a current situation, but I mean, like some stuff's just hilarious, bro. Wow. Okay, it's saying that uh, give five minutes. Follow the test of the. Oh, man, damn. Follow along with the task using the credentials provided. Log into the. I don't know why it's not working. Let's try local host 8080. And some stuff just be like. Some stuff just be wild. We're just going to move, man. Like, we're going to stick and move. We're not going to sit here and uh, deal with that. If it's not working, it's not working. All right. So, cyber threat intelligence. I'm going to probably finish that off on my own to make sure we're good. Now we're going to get into network security. I think it's fitting anyway, right? Because we, we, we've uh, spent like 30 minutes on that. Network security and traffic analysis. It is what it is. Um, physical, technical, and administrative access control, threat control. Um, dealing with an advanced crowd here for my subscribers. So I don't want to really like just bore you with those things. Just understand that a lot of times when you're a threat hunter, you have to understand. One thing that threat hunters, especially in my organization, don't understand is like um, things are already pretty much secure. Like if you go to any organization, normally things are up to date when it comes to security. Typically, it is your obviously I'm going to say something for the for the um, people, but it's obvious. People are your your main weakness, right? So, um, uh, lately though, you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of, uh, 
Um, damn. A lot of technologies that are being deployed that uh, sandbox your stuff. Like if a user clicks on a link, right, um, it's going to be sandboxed in that browser anyway. So it's kind of like having a, uh, a, a, a Docker container every time you open up a browser. And then in addition, if you're using VDI, if you're using Centrix and stuff like that, everyone has a... Uh, it's like an isolated VM. I don't know if VM is the right terminology there, but even though it's connected to the network, it's not because, uh, I don't know, technology, right? So it's very difficult or to um, almost impossible to break out of that um, instance. And then like, if anything does happen, you could also just tear it down and, and bring you up another one because like at the end of the day, typical organizations do not have a, you don't have a, um, your desktop isn't, uh, I think we get it, man. I've, I'm trying to explain it, but I'm explaining it poorly. Um, let's, let me just let, what is it called? Centrix? I think, or Citrix. I think it's Citrix. Why am I screwing this up? Citrix. Yes. Um, and I'm just saying stuff like this. So it's called service uh, desktop as a service. Thank you. Basically, you go, you log in, and when you log in, like everything is sandboxed, so that um, even if you do the worst, even if you go to the worst website and stuff like that, it's all to the point where attackers can't escape out of that thing, or so we think that they can't. And I just said all that to basically say that things are pretty much secure at um, in your workplace. And so you're not hunting like um, Joe Blow from Try Hack Me or some dude that's trying to rank up on Hack the Box. You're hunting very, very advanced individuals at work. Well, I know I do. And probably you do. Because, it's, again, just like I was saying earlier, it's not a walk in the park. Nobody's just getting in like, wow, I'm in. Didn't think I would get in, but I'm in. Like, nobody's doing that these days. But, yes, all of these things, access control, threat control, I'm going to let you read all that on your own. Important, though. Just understand that they do exist. Which security level, control level covers containing, create, that's administrative, right? I think. Yep. Um, technical? What was the other one? What does it say? Access control element works with data metrics. I don't know. Data metrics. They have zero trust in here too. I'm gonna to talk about zero trust. Zero trust is, uh, when people hear zero trust, they're like, yeah. No, it ain't. <laughs> it ain't really like, we're gonna talk about it. I'm going to say load balancing here. Load balancing. Uh, technology helps correlate different tool outputs and data sources. What does that say? I didn't read that right. Technology helps correlate different tool outputs. You see it? I don't, I don't know if I see it. It's like a small word. I don't know. <sighs> um, I'm going to say sore. I'm, I don't know what that is. Probably should submit. And that's correct. Zero trust. Let's talk about zero trust. So Oh, we can get some flags here. View site. So zero trust, basically my, whatever, my impression of zero trust, is, try hack me is so dope, bro. We've been sleeping on try hack me so long. Re restore the network traffic and record the traffic. What, what are you talking about? I don't know. Um, 
There are two main types. Now use the status site to simulate a traffic analysis operation and find the flags. I don't know what to do. Okay. Am I supposed to be intercepting this somehow? Because I don't know how to do that. Oh, here's the log now. Okay. So zero trust. If you if you if you think that you're going to just like go into a meeting or something and um, explain zero trust. Turn around and go back. <laughs> Turn around and go back, bro. Oh, suspicious IP. I don't know. I'm just going to say 10. This is easy. 10, 99, 16. I'll tell you, zero trust has two. Let's do all the 99s. 29. Oh, the traffic still got in. <laughs> this is dope, though, in a way. I just need to watch where the red stuff comes from then. How about that? 62 and 99. That's easy. 62 and 99 are the two. Why would they make it that easy? 10, 10, 99, 99. So zero trust, let's talk about that. Restart network traffic. Zero trust is, I think, from what I see, so it's being blocked. It's there to annoy the shit out of the uh, the workers there or the uh, administrators and stuff. That's basically what it does. What? Did you guys see that? I tried to copy it and it went away. So it's going to do two things off top, like wh no matter what kind of implementation that you use. Why didn't they give me the damn flag? Mm. It's going to do two things. It's going to make the attack service very small. So the way that you connect to the thing or the thing that you're protecting is going to make it like, is going to segment it in a way that, uh, um, greatly reduces the ways that you can communicate with this thing. But more importantly, it's going to bug your um, your users for um, credentials all the time. So you can bug them like, hey, put in your password again. Hey, put in your password again. Hey, put in your password again. Like every three minutes or so. And what that is trying to do is, um, what, go ahead. It's trying to make sure that like, if someone gets in or if, if someone attacks, you uh i don't know if they know your credentials then it's like just keep putting them in but it's supposed to it's supposed to make life super hard for an attacker if they're in i just explained it poorly so we'll <laughs> we'll like, um, do a better job of explaining that but you should know if you're on a network with zero trust that gets it's immediately uh obvious immediately obvious let's do that again restart network traffic packet master why didn't they let me copy this packet master thm packet master i don't know why they didn't just let me copy that out 
uh this time instead of three ip addresses select three destination ports mm. okay i don't know why you would want to do that four 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 come on bro with the four 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 um 62 to 13 13 6 98 uh one more 3 5 9 7 I wouldn't try to like I wouldn't try to block ports and think that I'm the man bro obviously I I think I got we got enough oh, Oh, we still got traffic that still got in. Wow. Start network traffic. Like, you can change ports pretty easily. So. Don't go crazy with ports. Don't go crazy with IPs either. Let me move my head out of the way so you can just get the full effect of what's going on here. What? I'm not doing this again. This isn't the best experience. 99.99 at the filter. 62 at the filter. Restart. We've been here for a while. It feels like. Ooh, next level. Uh, what are the two? Select three destination port oh destination i'm doing source <laughs> uh 4444 four, four, four. and then why would we 44 four. no 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 right i don't know uh Getting confused here. Um, what is it? Seven, 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 seven. Um, can't block twenty one. Why would I block twenty one? It still got in, bro. You see this bull crap? They, they make me start all over again <laughs> every time. This is frustrating. We might have to just like move past this. Ten, ten, ninety nine, ninety nine. We might have to move past this because this is not. Nope. What's the answers, Google? <clears throat> Bro, I'm going to. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm pretty, I'm pretty burned down on this. Restart network traffic. That's not gonna work. Ugh. I wish they would let me actually look at the traffic and stop messing with this, whatever this is. on my damn nerves all right 
10, 10, 99, 99 at the filter. 62 at the filter. Restart. Next level. Destination port. So I'm I'm sure that this is source, this is destination. It doesn't say that, but that's what I'm assuming here. Oh. Well, um twenty nine nine nine. I guess. Um, can I delete that? Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, that's right. Seven, 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 seven. Sixty two. Can we block 21? Is that appropriate? I don't know. Twenty one. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck, bro? Bro, I'm done, man. What is the fucking answer? Jeez. Damn, man. <sighs> Try. <laughs> oh, man. This is about to piss me off. I'm laughing because I'm frustrated. I'm going to come back to that. This doesn't make any fucking sense. Let's try one more time. So, I'm guessing... All right, let me just calm down because maybe maybe it's a live stream. Maybe it's just me like trying to just not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm going to try one more time. Mm. All right. 10. Nope. 10, 99, 99 at the filter. And 62 at the filter. Restart. All of those get blocked. Next level. It says three destination ports to block to stop the server getting compromised. All right. So this has to be the destination port. I'm thinking because the traffic is coming from the 4444. So 2999, it's got to be one. I guess 445 doesn't count because you don't want to block. So 7777 has to count. And then. This isn't enough information. 
طيب Select three destination ports to block to stop the server getting compromised. Seven, seven, seven. So it's got to be four, four, five, man. No, not four, four, five, because that's legitimate. So it's going to here. So that's right. No, let's go back. No, 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 that's right. 445 is not coming from anything bad. It's going to the 7777, so that's bad. And then that's going to 21, and that's from a bad IP. Like, I know I already did this. But I don't see any other way here. These three are the bad ones, two and then three. What's up, son? Yeah, I don't. This makes no sense. <sighs> Maybe they mean destination ports as in like Okay, I'm gonna try this. Um, ten. Ten. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Add to filter. Ten. Ten. Twenty nine. No, no, no. Sixty two. Add to filter. Restart network traffic. So this works, but I just, I don't know if you knew, if you just joined, I've been having trouble figuring out what they mean by destination ports, which I know what a destination port is. It's just their interpretation. So instead of that, I'm just going to block everything on a suspicious IP like I did at first. So, uh, 4444 four, four, four was the first one. Instead of like destination ports, they should have said, uh, I don't know what they should have said actually. Um, 62, let's do 13, 6, 9, 13, 6, 98, uh, 3, 5, 9, 8, 7. Now, this makes absolutely no sense, <laughs> but we'll see. Oh my God, man. It keeps coming from the 62. So I'm going to just block everything. Cause I, it seems like I got the 99, the 99 is good. It's like I'm screwing up the 62 one. Oh, 10. 10, 99, 99. Maybe it's not correct or something. I don't know. Not every site is like good like that. Next level. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I tried that one. Let's try that one again. 7777. Add the filter. Um, what? Oh, do you think, do you think they mean this as in like, yeah, so, so I picked up on that, but do you think this means like unwanted destination ports? Because if so, you're right. So you don't want that because that has no purpose. And then 3689 isn't a thing. So if we did it like that. Let's try that 3689. Oh, wait a minute. Let's try 2222. At the filter, restart. Oh, that worked. We got to see why that worked. 777. Seven, seven. I gotta see how that, why that worked. I wanna play that one more time. I have to understand that. I think what ended up happening was like, um, which is bad practice and it's, this is bad on try hack me if this is the case. But they basically are saying here in this, in this exercise, is if a number doesn't correspond with a well-known port, is that how you say? It? Like if this is not a well-known number, block it. But you can change the numbers of anything. You can change the numbers of your ACTP if you want to. You can change the number of your SSH if you want to. So that's that's not really a good lesson that they're teaching anybody there. So if you want it on four 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 four, like nobody nobody can stop you. That's not a bad security practice. Ugh, I'm not gonna worry with it. We got it. Thanks. It's, you you actually got it for me. I appreciate it. I'm not gonna try to say all those letters, but you know who you are, bro. I've seen your name around before, so this bump, bro. All right, where are we? Snort. How many people in the room have heard about Snort? Snort and to me, Snort and Suricata go together. I don't even know the difference, actually. Keep it real with you. I think Snort, I think Suricata is the shit. Let me Google that so I don't mislead anybody. Snort versus Suricata. I think Suricata is the pay version. So Suricata does much more than Snort. Other than that, they're the same. They take the same rules and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we're going to complete that. Complete it. They want me to start a VM here. So we'll start the machine. I'm going to like my own video. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Um, like my video there. So IDS and IPS. <sighs> what do you say? Monitors the traffic flow from various areas of the network. Monitors the traffic flow from a single. Imp oh, okay, so they did explain it correctly. I was gonna say that they should break it down into uh, nids and hits, but they did already. So I don't even have to do that. This is good information here. And then IPS. So in addition to what they're saying here, because I think uh, we have signature based, behavior based, policy based, etc. right? In addition to what this is saying here, uh, network intrusion and network prevention um, systems, network prevention. It's what is 
What does I stand for again? Intrusion. Damn. A web proxy also works as an intrusion detection or an intrusion prevention system to make sure that you don't have bad subdomains on the network. So, um, yeah. So it, it works very hard so that we don't have to go after script kitties. Which snort mode can help you stop the threats on the local machine? I don't know. That's a good question. Oh, snort mode. Snort, mo snort has modes? Oh. Local machine. Stop nids. I think. Uh. Hids, right? I don't know. It says nips. What? What are they saying? Snort mode can help you stop the threats on a local machine. Hips. It's got to be something with host in it. All right, boom. Snort mode can help you detect threats on a local network. Detect, so that's going to be NIDS. The answer is correct. Snort mode can help you detect threats on a local machine. It's going to be HIDS. Stop threats on the network. NID, uh, what? Stop threats is NIPS. Works similar to NIPS. Mm, what? What is that? <laughs> what snort mode works similar to nips mode? I don't know. It's a good question. IPS. Um, NID. Um, I don't see any three letter uh, snort modes here. I don't know if you guys could see any of that, but I don't see any. Let's uh, search for the word similar. Do they expect me to put NBA? Yeah, they do. Never heard of that. According to the official description of snort, what kind of nips is it? Signature base, right? What? It's not behavior base. What kind of nips is it? Passive is probably it. I think. Let me see if that's enough letters. One, two, three, four. Nope. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> is it? Is it saying that snore is behavior based? Okay, I was about to say, that's not correct. Is it rule based or are they looking for rule based? Uh, okay. 
I'm really looking for open source. No. Hmm. I don't know what the hell they want here. What is that? One, two, three, four. Actually, seven, eight. They need a 10 letter word. This is 11. This is 10. They don't want rule based. We already tried that. That's a 10 letter word. We can just do regex on this joint and look for <laughs> look for 10 letter word. Um let me see. Okay. Well, host space is a 10 letter word as well, but I know that snort is not a host space. Intrusion detection. Let me see if they just screwed it up. Oh. How can a NIPS be host space? Tripping. Not real time. Cross platform. Mm -mm. Let's look at this. Uh, I think those works for. So it's a uh, it's a ten letter word according to the official description. What kind of nips is it? Is they had a. So these are the types of uh, network intrusion prevention systems. Yeah, signature based, behavior based. Is that a that's a nine letter word if signature behavior both nine letter words I'm looking for a ten letter word I don't see it. I don't see it, bro. NBA training period is also known as baselining, I think. I don't know. Yeah, so that's correct. Maybe it's somewhere in here.
So you have, so for nips, you have two types. You have passive. No, never mind. So, so nips is active. What else? For network, how do you describe? Um, nips is behavior based. That is a nine letter word as we've already seen. Uh, the model provides to take a uh, heavily problematic. Hips is working similar stuff to it. No, whatever. This is behavior. Snort to me. Uh, open source. That's 11 words. Man. This doesn't make any sense. Full blown. Where do we see that? Are you serious? Snort can blah blah blah, which is used for network traffic. Uh, -uh I would have never got that. I've never, nobody uses that terminology. So it's 632. That's going to pretty much end the live stream. I got some other stuff to do today. Uh, I appreciate you stopping by and seeing me struggle, but just uh, just a recap on everything. Um, cyber threat intelligence, yes. And then dig more into that network security and traffic analysis, yes. For next Wednesday, we'll do these two. I have this done on my own time. I'll probably try to do a uh, this weekend. If I have a little bit of time during the night, I'll do like a rogue live stream, um, depending on how I'm feeling. But these morning live streams, they'll continue to uh, happen or whatever. But I think understanding endpoint security monitoring, specifically um, EDRs, super important. Um, as you see, I've already done a few, um, but I'm going to go through all of them anyway. And then seams. These are, these are your two big ticket items when it comes to threat hunting. All this other stuff is like extra, like incident response. Like I'm not on an incident re response team. So cause I've never done that, but I do know like what goes on and then you got fishing. Right. And then ooh, that'll be it. How? I don't know. It just gets better and better as it goes down. So hopefully you guys stick around for that one. All right, tomorrow, what are we doing tomorrow? We got to have a plan for every day. I don't want to have to get up and like stumble around and try to f figure it out on the fly. So based on how, the, based on the views and how you guys uh interact with the videos, I've been trying to like craft my plan out. So that everyone gets the maximum benefit. Let me see. Let me see what's on 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 the plan for tomorrow. <laughs> so you know what to expect, right? To so you know whether you want to join the live stream or maybe you want to work on your own. I encourage you, regardless of what you do, just work. So it's going to be Active Directory Day. Active Directory Day. What? So soon? Let me see. It feels like it's too soon for that. Today's Wednesday, actually. So tomorrow's Thursday is Active Directory. Friday is going to be Friday and Saturday are always um, King of the Hills. So King of the Hills are fun. You get to see me like turn to a fucking monster. <laughs>
And then Sunday, we typically do a hack the box machine, the one of the newest hack the box retired machines. If the machine is too much, typically what we'll do is uh, we'll find another way to kind of like address some concerns in that realm. And then Monday, we have just Monday. We don't really have a plan for Monday. It's just like whatever. And then Tuesday will be another try hack me machine. Kind of like, all right, we got this machine. How do we get in it? Can we get in it in 60 minutes? So it's kind of the plan for the week. Damn, I'm moving shit out of the way. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll see you guys next uh, next time, which will be tomorrow. Thanks for coming. Um, and we out. Peace. <laughs>